What's up guys, welcome to River Park. Thanks for joining our online experience today. You're watching our most recent live experience. If you wanna catch us the next time we're live, we're live every single Sunday at 9 a.m. You can join us here online or you can check it, our experience out at one of our campuses. We wanna to get to know you. So if you're not yet connected, you can either click the Get Connected link or text the word River Park to 97000. We hope this experience blesses you today and hope to see you soon. this morning we're going to go a little bit deeper into worship and we invite you to worship with us There at the 
one more time. Delighted to have you here today. Welcome to the park, everybody. River Park fam, always great to see you here. And to our online audience, welcome. We are so honored you tuned in to join us today. Uh, we're going to give you a chance to continue to worship by giving later in the experience. But online audience, you are up now. You get to give now. And thank you guys for your generosity and your giving. Today is an exciting day, y'all. Thank you for braving the awful, terrible, horrible weather because we are going to be breaking ground or maybe like breaking mud <laughs> on our new kids building after our second experience today. This is a great chance for you if you want to go grab some brunch or some donuts or something in between experiences and then come back and join us for that. We would love for you to celebrate with us as we break ground today. We're going to give you about 30 seconds right now. Stand up on your feet, meet somebody new, and we are so excited to have a special guest with us headed your way soon with a great word. What's up, everyone? Welcome to River Park. We are so glad that you're joining us today. If you are a first time guest or have been coming for a while and want to connect with us, please text River Park to 97000 for an opportunity to connect with us. This will help you get plugged in at River Park, show you all of the amazing things that's happening, and help us get to know you better. Now, if you're wondering what's going on around here at River Park, because we always have things going on, please text keep up to that same number or go on our app or our website. This will keep you up to date on everything that's happening around here. Now, we have some exciting news. We are about to begin building our kids building. Yes, this is so exciting. The moment we've all been waiting for. Woo! We will be having a groundbreaking ceremony following our second experience. So please join us on this exciting adventure. We've already had such an amazing time today. Our hope for you is that you will continue experiencing God. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to River Park. Come on, somebody. If you're not excited, DeAndre will make you exciting. Amen. To those of you watching online today, welcome to the Louisiana Swamp. It's an awesome day, it's raining, and we're having a great time here at the Worship Center on the River Park campus. We are delighted today to have some special guests with us, and we don't take this for granted every time that they come through. I'll get out of your way so you can put that in position, and I won't block your, your, you're quick. I would have stood there longer if I'd have known you was going to be that quick. Uh, but we, we, they come through, and we don't take this for granted, the long-term friendship that we have with Hollis and Charlotte. Uh, Conway and the blessing they are not only to River Park campus they've been with, with us I don't know how many times for 4th of July and uh, they're just part of this family and we thank them so much love them dearly but they bless the world Hollis is a two time Olympian uh, and uh, just stands out among well, he's tall so he stands out and, and but he's not just tall in stature he's tall in his heart and uh, he and Charlotte both we love them dearly and are grateful for what they mean to the kingdom of God. Online audience, again, thank you for watching. I promise you, you're not going to be disappointed by what you hear today. Start sharing with your friends right now. Get them to connect with what Pastor Hollis has to say. Welcome to the park. Welcome to the park, all of our campuses. Hollis Conway, come bless us with your heart. I love you, man. We'll do a fist love bump, you too, elbow. Pastor. 
Whatever you call it. I didn't mean to knock you down. He's been working out. Good morning. Ooh, love the weather. We've been driving since 5 o'clock this morning to come see you guys. So hopefully you're awake. Let's make sure this thing works. Awesome. It's always good. Always a heart jumps when you think that's not going to work. Uh, where's my clock at? Look at it. There we go. We're going already. Um, pastor took some of my time, so we're going to add that on at the end. Man, we missed you guys. I think it's been about two years that we've been uh, out in purgatory uh, that y'all sent us to. Um, but I, I wasn't trying to calculate. It has to be over 10 years of 4th of July that we've been here. Hot dogs and barbecues and games. And, and uh, so we, we love it here. We feel like we're family. Whether y'all think I'm family or not, I'm family. I'm, guess who's coming to dinner? That's me. The world is crazy right now, isn't it? I was just thinking back to the time where we were just doing everything, whatever we wanted, going to restaurants and movies, and, and times have changed. It just kind of transformed over time really quickly to where now this is almost the new norm, unfortunately, and we're looking hopefully to transform back to what it used to be, but hopefully we'll be a little bit better when we get there. So I was just thinking about all this transformation and thought, Maybe we need to talk about the transformation process. How does that happen? Why does it happen? Does it need to happen? What do we need to do? Um, I think it's an important question to ask these days because whether we like it or not, things are transforming. We are conforming and things are transforming whether we like it or not. Um, and so I thought what an appropriate scripture. God is so awesome that he put everything that we need in the word of God. Romans 12, 2 says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what that good and acceptable and perfect will of God is. So I want to talk about the transformation process. I want to pray real quick and then we'll jump in. I'm going to do a, a pretty lengthy introduction and then give you probably three key points that I think if we uh, apply them to our lives, uh, I think we'll do and become uh, and act like what God wants us to do, become, and act. Amen? Amen. All right, so let's pray real quick. Father, we love you. We praise you. God, we thank you for the rain. I know a lot of people get frustrated by the weather, but God, your rain is such a refreshing, um, it's a dew, Lord God, that just, it can drench our soul and our spirit, Lord God. So we thank you for the rain, God. We thank you for this time. We thank you for the people here. Now, God, we ask that you would speak through me, God. Let the people hear your words. Help me to decrease that you might increase. And our lives will be changed forever. God, we love you, we praise you, and we glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hopefully most of you got a chance to see uh, from Pastor Mark's introduction my beautiful wife over here. I had a dream that I was either going to marry Halle Berry or Jennifer Lopez. And <laughs> God gave me my little Halle Lopez right there. My little Halle Lopez. Um, to transform... A lot of us know this. It means to change form, uh, uh, a metamorphosis. It's kind of like a caterpillar that changes into a butterfly, something completely different. It happens over time. There's an incubation period. Um, I have some exciting news to tell you. In 20 days, 20 days, my oldest daughter is getting married. We was almost there three years ago and pulled up at the finish line. But we think we're going to get through this time. <laughs> we think we're going to get through this time. 20 days. She and her fiance, he's a great man of God. Um, they're so excited. But they don't have a clue about what they're getting into. They're dreaming of rainbows and candy drop kisses and, 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 and things are great. They have no idea what's about to happen to their lives. Now, my wife and I, next year is going to be 30 years married, 33 years together. Thank you. Thank you. You do not know what I've had to put up with for those 30 years. 30 years. Some of those were really good years, too. Um, <laughs> but I don't know what happened. Somewhere in those 30 years, things change. When we first got together, we conformed. I mean, we, we acted like we laughed at all the same jokes. Uh, we wore the same, we wore matching clothes. Um, 
we liked all the same things, went to all the same places, and people started to say, y'all even look alike. <laughs> we just kind of conformed because part of that, we were getting to know each other, and we wanted to do all the same things, spend all the time together. But somewhere along those 30 years, things began to transform. And all of a sudden, I can't even dress myself anymore. I don't know what colors match. Um, she asked me questions for my opinion, but I don't think she really wants to know my opinion unless by some miraculous chance it agrees with what she's already predetermined the answer should be. Things change. There were times when we used to be on the phone all night, fall asleep, you hang up, no, you hang up, no, you hang up. Now I'm like, what? I just talked to you. What's going on? Things have transformed in our marriage over the years. But here's why I think that happens. All right? When we first met, we were single and free. We didn't have any responsibilities. We could do whatever we wanted, go wherever we wanted, spend as much time together. But all of a sudden, we got a little serious. We got engaged, and we ended up getting married, and we bought our first home together. And then all of a sudden, you get home problems and responsibilities. Now you have to cook and go grocery shopping. And, and you know, you got to do laundry. And, and you, have to buy, you have to buy things for the house. And you have to decorate. And you argue over, you know, what color paint and what bricks. And, and then you, the sink breaks. And then the toilet breaks. And, and, and life changes because now you have other stuff to worry about. And then somehow, she ends up pregnant. <laughs> And again, and again, and the baby's come, and, and you know, her body begins to change, which means her mood begins to change. And all of a sudden, you're getting ice cream at 2 in the morning, you know, and, 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 and then you're having those labor pains, and you're not as comfortable, and then the baby comes, and then that first baby cries for three months straight. We were laughing because we used to lay in the bed, and we, we, she's looking, and we try not to move because she's crying. But if she see you, she thinks she's going to come get you. So there were probably months where we just laid in the bed like this. <laughs> and all of a sudden, we become more grouchy because now we have responsibilities, and you got to feed the baby, and the babies get sick, and, 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 the, and the relationship begins to change. And then those babies begin to get into the activity years where they're doing softball and, and cheerleading and, and science fairs. And all of a sudden, your, your life is revolved around their schedule. And maybe one is playing over here at 6 o'clock and one is playing over there at 930. And your whole life is like you passing each other in the wind. And then you get those teenage years where nobody likes anybody in the house. And nobody knows anything, and the stress level is here, and you spend those years going, what is going on? It changes. And then they start to get older, and you have graduations, and you have college, and, and you have boys, and you have cars, and car breakdowns, and car accidents, and all kinds of things, and you're dealing with those frustrations. And then all of a sudden, they go off, and, you, and they're trying to live their life, and you're, you're worrying about those things, and all of a sudden, you know, you begin to, your body begins to change, and maybe you have some health issues, or maybe it's eye issues and ear issues and body issues, and you go through those periods, and then you have, you know, money problems and job problems. And, you know, life, let me put it this way. Life, experiences, and relationships with time demand that you transform. You should not be the same person you were 30 years ago. She is not the woman I married, but she shouldn't be the woman I married. Because we've lived life together. We've experienced some things together. And it demanded that we change. Because when the seasons change, you cannot be in the dead of winter dressed like summer. If you don't change... Your life and your experiences will not be what God wants them to be. You're out of season. So, for better or worse, you cannot have a significant relationship with someone or something and not expect it to transform over time. Sometimes we're just blindsided. Transformation is going to happen. You can fight it. You can resist it. But you're going to be out of place, out of time, out of date, and maybe miss what God wants to do in the new season of your life. 
I believe relationships are critical to the world we live in today. Everything we read in the God is about relationships. We're the body of Christ. The body relates to each other. It connects us to each other. Every joint supplies what's needed. Relationships are critical to the world we live in today. Unfortunately, I believe some of us have been in a long-term relationship with the wrong person. We've lived life and we've had life experiences and, and emotions and, and joy and pain with the wrong person. Sometimes I think we've married the world. We've been in a long-term relationship with the world. We wake up in it every day. We experience it every day. We talk about it every day. We act like it every day. We've been in a long-term relationship in the world. But the Bible says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So I want to talk about the transformation process. I want to give you three things, and there's some things under each point that I think we could take today and use and really be blessed today by this because it really blessed me. Now, a lot of this I've heard from a lot of different people, and they were so profound that I thought I, I just wrote them down because I think I, I need to be reminded of these things, and I combined them all here today. So don't think all of this is me. Uh, the Lord put the right people in my life to speak the right now word that I hear that I need to do every day, and I want to share with you. All right, so the first part is says, do not be conformed. Do not be conformed. Do not be conformed. To conform oneself, your mind and your character oftentimes adapts to another person's pattern. We're going to talk about patterns today. It's going to be a key word. Um, we know that we're not supposed to conform, but we do it anyway for various reasons. Here's some of the reasons we, we conform. Dependence on other people. Some of us depend on other people to give us the things that we need. Maybe they, they, they comfort us. Maybe they encourage us. Maybe our identity is lost in them. But because we depend on other people, we begin to conform to whatever those other people want us to be, say, and do because we can't make it without them. We're afraid to lose that relationship. We don't know how to make it alone. We don't, we don't have the strength within God. We, we're not depending on God as our source. We're not, he's not supplying all of our needs. We're, we're looking to other people. And so when we look to other people, you have to conform to whatever they want or they're not going to be there for you. Sometimes we do it because of low self-esteem. We don't have any idea who we are. You know, God says uh, we're this, but we don't believe it. And, and when you have low self-esteem... You, you tend to grab hold to anything that will feed that Lord to, to build you up. And you begin to depend on other people. It goes right back to depending on other people. Sometimes it's just lack of motivation. Some people think lack of mo motivation is lazy. It's not. I mean, there's people who, who lack motivation who really want to do something. They're not lazy. They're just, they've been beat down by the world. Life has been hard. They've been fighting so long until they just have no energy to get up and try to do anything. And when you lack motivation, the world will give you all kinds of false motivation to make you think that it'll make you feel good. It'll actually keep you depressed and isolated and with full of low esteem, but it feels good. And so we're not motivated to do anything else. And one of the other reasons we conform is just fear. I went to two Olympics, and I, I've been around some of the world's greatest athletes, but I've also been around athletes who have more ability than the athletes who were successful, but they were afraid to do what it takes to be successful. They were afraid to fail. They were afraid to hurt. They were afraid of success. They were afraid what that would mean to their life. And fear kept them from experiencing all that God has for them, even though they had everything they needed to be successful. All these factors can limit your personal growth and development and prevent you from being who God created you to be. So I, I found this Dr. Daniel Aiken, president of Southeastern Seminary, in this session, he talked a lot about the book of Daniel, and a lot of us are familiar with Daniel. But he, 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 he said this, he said, we live in a society that is increasingly hostile to God's truth and God's people. Would you agree with that? We live in a society that's increasingly Hostile to God's truth and God's people. And this society will keep intense pressure on you to conform to it. 
<laughs> Just look at the news. So here's four ways that happens. Number one, isolation. Isolation from other believers and immersion into a world of false assumptions make it difficult to maintain your Christian convictions. I believe Hebrews said, do not forsake the assembling together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more that you see the day approaching. The enemy tries to isolate us. Then indoctrination. Worldly indoctrinations take place all the time through education, through entertainment, through societal expectations. Have you been around any of our educational facilities and what they're teaching and what our kids are being indoctrinated with? Have you watched any type of entertainment, listened to any type of music, and figured out what we're being indoctrinated in? My wife and I, we listen, We like old R&B songs from Frankie Beverly and Mays, Aretha Franklin and, and Prince. And, and so we're singing these songs and just so happened we caught some of the words that we were singing and we're like, oh my God, (laughs) what in the world? And we realized we've just been indoctrinated. We're singing and dancing. We have no idea of what's being indoctrinated in our mind. Assimilation. The world looks to completely change the mind and lifestyle of the believer. Just look at the news stories about celebrities and singers who no longer believe what the church taught them about God. I've always been amazed that when you, 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 if you just do a history search of some of your favorite singers, country, rock, you know, I like all this stuff because I have a daughter that's in theater and they sing all kinds of stuff. And I started singing some Bon Jovi and, and you know, some Garth Brooks and stuff. I just, just, rock, rock. and realized almost all these people started off in the church. With the word of God, but somewhere over time, through indoctrination and a simulation, they've gotten away from the foundation that they were built on. It's amazing. Which leads to the last one, confusion. Just look at the world today. You can't really tell the difference between, sometimes, between a Christian and a non-Christian. We act, look, speak, and think sometimes just like the world. It's amazing. At certain times of my life, if you catch me somewhere, you look, that doesn't look like who he says he is. Confused. Sometimes we get confused. So when I think about the conforming question, the question really is, who do I look like? Who do I look like? Have I conformed or have I been transformed? And so it led me to point number two, what, what needs to happen is that I need to change the pattern. And this is some meat right here. This is where I really wanted to get to. I said all that stuff to get to this point right here. We need to change the pattern. A pattern is a repetitive rhythm that determines the norm. We are what we repeat. So think about this. A baby, when it's born, is not born speaking English. It's not born speaking German. Not born speaking Chinese. It's just born. The baby will speak what it hears repeatedly. That baby's going to repeat the pattern. It's going to hear the pattern of our words, and the baby's going to repeat it. So if a baby grows up hearing English, it's going to speak English. If a baby grows up hearing rebuke and negative stuff, guess what's going to happen? If a baby grows up being condemned, it's going to repeat the pattern. We are what we repeat. So if you think about the five most, I would, normally this is the question, think about the five most influential people in your life. But I like to think of it this way. Think about the five people you spend the most time with. They're way more influential than the people that you think are influential. Because we are the sum of the five people that we spend the most time with. That could be scary. So in order to be successful in this deal that we have to be able to recognize the pattern. We're good at seeing the problems, but we fail to see the patterns that cause the problems. So I did an event called the high jump, and I always watch the high jump, and I like to watch coaches who are coaching their kids who are high jumping. You know, you have to run, you jump up in the air, you go over the bar backwards, and you land in the pit. And I would often see coaches, when a kid hits the bar with his butt on top, he'll say, pick your butt up. 
when he knocks the ball off with his arm, he said, don't hit it with your arm. Sometimes they'll get on top of the bar and they'll just nick it with their legs. And he said, kick your legs quicker because he's really good at seeing the problem. But that's not going to fix it because it's the pattern. The high jump, the over the bar is simply a result of what you did on the ground. You see, if you're running at full speed and you stop, the only thing that you can do is go straight up in the air and go straight down. If you're too far out and you dive at it, the only thing your body can do is go in a diving motion. What happens over the bar is predetermined by the pattern that's on the ground. And until you recognize the pattern, you can't fix the problem. There are some problems in our lives that we're producing that we're really good at seeing them, but we're not looking at the pattern that caused those problems. Maybe there's some things that happened in your childhood. Maybe there's some things that, that some people said to you. Maybe there, there's a pattern of people that you keep listening to that's producing some problems down here. The problem is not the problem. The problem is the pattern. So maybe uh, while we're trying to figure out what the, the, the result of the conforming looked like and we're trying to fix that, maybe we need to go back and look at the pattern that's causing the conformation and change the pattern, which will produce transformation. We got to look at the pattern. If we keep going through life and not recognizing the pattern, we'll never change. And maybe we're not experiencing the transformation God has for us because we're not following the pattern that God has for us through his word. God's words transform. And so we need to be in God's word. So finally, we look at, we have to renew our mind. We have to renew our minds. My friends, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. I don't know if you ever heard that. I just made that up. <laughs> and I'm afraid that I've wasted a whole lot of my mind on the cares of this world. I can't escape them. If I want to stay married, I have to think about the things that it takes to stay married. I have children. I want my children to live the life that God wants them to live. I have to think about the things that they go through, and it's broad. They go through hurt and pain and frustration. We get angry at each, each other, and, and we deal with things. Um, if I want to be successful in my job, I have to think about all the things that go along with it, with my boss, with my coworkers, with the purpose of that job. The, you can't get away from the world. You look at the news, and there's things happening in this world. You're not going to escape it. You can't hide in a shell. I have to renew my mind according to the word of God to be able to deal with this because if I try to deal with the problems without the pattern that God has set for me, it's not going to produce the, God, the results that God wants me to have. And so renewal is a process. It's the shedding of the old outer covering and putting on the new. It's not a one-time event. It's a continuous process from now until the Lord calls us home. You don't get to take a break. You got to get in there. I mean, I, I was really smart back then, but I didn't forgot a lot of stuff. And if I don't go back and read and remember, th I, I, have you ever read something like, oh, I remember that. If you say that a whole lot of times, we probably need to read a whole lot more, <laughs> you know. Ephesians 4.23 says, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds. Colossians 3.2 says, set your minds on things above, not on the things that are on earth. John 8.32 says, and you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. One of my favorite right here, Philippians 4, it says, finally, brothers, finally, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. There's other things that you can think about, but the Bible's coming in. Think about this. I know a lot of us really want to change the pattern, but I want to tell you, your resolve is not going to change the pattern. I don't care how bad you want to change the pattern. You could pray about changing the pattern. You could cry about changing the pattern, but until you actually change the pattern, it's not going to change. You got to do something. Faith without works is dead. I believe in the miracles of God. God is a miracle working God, but I don't think God wants me to live my life only on his miracles. God wants me to do something. 
He gave me the ability. He gave me the strength. He will help me. I have to actually go out there and be obedient to his word. Patterns are not going to change just because you want them to change. You got to change the patterns. You got all the help and the resources you need to change the pattern. And you got to know that. So instead of consuming the world's words, why don't we consume God's words? Instead of being an expert on the world's issues, why don't we become an expert on God's promises? We have to change the pattern. The value of God's word is in the application. You know, we have, we have a, a, a beautiful home, but once you, you know, you stay in it long enough, sometimes you want to change some things. And you think, you know, maybe we want to paint this room this color. Maybe you have this grand idea that you're going to make your house into this beautiful experience. And you go out, you buy everything you need to make your home that beautiful experience. And you can buy the most expensive paints, the, the, the softest paint brushes, and you can, you can get every tool you need, but you know that home will never change until you apply those things to the walls. My daughters get married, and they're talking a whole lot about all kinds of makeup and stuff. You can't imagine how expensive this stuff is. And they're getting all this gook and stuff to go on their face and all these brushes and all these different things. But you know her face will look exactly the same if she don't apply that stuff to it. Our lives are going to be exactly the same until we take God's word and we apply it to our lives. The secret is in the application. We got to recognize the pattern. We, we, we can't be conformed to this world but you got to recognize the patterns that are causing that co conformity you got to recognize it and then you got to change the pattern but you can't just want to change it you just can't cry about change you can't fuss about change we're really good at getting on social media and letting the world know how we feel the world don't care about how you feel they got trolls on there just wait it doesn't even matter what you say they got the answer they got it, it, what well, you know what? We need to understand what God says, and we need to say what God says. But you know what? Just saying what God says is not as powerful as you living what God says. We have to apply what God said. I hear people saying this all the time, and I'm about to pray. They say, we're all God's children. That's not true. We're all God's creation. You're only a child of the family you're born into. If you want to be God's child, you got to be born again. You got to um, accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You got to believe that he died on the cross and rose again. And you got to confess that with your mouth, believe it with your heart. We're not all God's children. We're all God's creation. And if we're God's creation then the pattern of our lives should reflect him. We have to apply his word. We have to apply his principles. We got to live it out on a, daily basis, on a daily basis so people will see our good works and glorify him, not us. See, people watch me jump over a bar really high and they glorify me about that. But you know what my response is? God gave me that ability. I didn't do that. You know, recognize the source. Not that we shouldn't do good things, but we need to understand where they came from. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the giver of every good and perfect gift. He's the source. And so my encouragement to you today as I pray just a simple prayer is that we recognize the patterns that are producing the results in our life. And if those patterns are not producing what God wants us to produce, then we need to change the pattern. Father, I pray right now that you give us spiritual eyes to see beyond the lies of the enemy. That we recognize the, the hurt and the pain and the frustration of the path, the patterns that were spoken into our lives, the patterns of things that happened to us, God, that we see those things and we begin to apply your word to those things that will produce a different pattern that will give us a different result. God, we pray that right now. We thank you for who you are and what you've done for us. Thank you for your son, Jesus. God, we love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.